Hello, my name is Gary Shotton, and I'm here as a part of Inspiring Better Business. And today I've titled this Just a Few Words. And what I mean by that is that uh, in life I look back at a number of times and I had someone speak to me just a few words. And those words have stuck with me and helped guided me in a positive way in an amazing chain of events. And I want to share a number of those with you now as I have time. Now I'll mention that there's also times that I've heard and know of that someone has spoken a very negative word to somebody and that caused that person to go extremely off, off course and, and be very even destructive to themselves. So just a few words that are positive. Well, I'll start out with uh, my being about 11 or 12 years old. And I was a typical young kid, and I had two brothers, and we were good at fighting with each other, and we had uh, discipline, you know, discipline and mad at each other. And I was kind of already had to, thought I had to fend for myself, and I thought I needed uh, more attention from my mom, I guess, because uh, I happened to be in a family where my mother's sister was an extreme special needs sister. Now this is back in the 40s and 50s and so special needs meant that at age 45 when Claire passed away she had the mind of a six-year-old. Well that meant my mother was very sensitive to those people in that same situation. And briefly, I was in a small town and there was a hotel that wasn't being used and someone in a very positive way had made this a shelter that probably the government paid for housing for a group of these people to live in a similar situation, but they were functional. And uh, mom made a point to befriend them. And that, I honor my mom for that. And as ladies would be, she would wash their hair. Well, what's the point here, Gary? Well they would come over to our house and just to be honest being a punk kid I was rather disappointed that my mother would have these weird people come into our house these ladies and she would take the time to wash their hair and you know I was thinking I need my socks washed and we need a better meal I mean you know I was kind of a brat but one thing happened that just a few words are such just a situation and I almost tear up when I say it every time so if I do I apologize so it was a normal afternoon, I wasn't thinking of anything, and I go to the back door of our house, and there's these three ladies, and it actually disgusted me. I'm thinking, why are these ladies coming over here? Don't you know that I need my mom to take care of me, was kind of my thought. And they had wanted to ask to see mom, and they had uh, a small box of chocolate-covered cherries. Now this is when it gets touched to me. And they looked at me and said, could we see Betty? It's her birthday. I had forgotten mom's birthday. And these ladies came over and shamed me like no end. Not intentionally, just a few words. And I think those few words have made it possible for my entire life to respect those that are, don't have the advantage I have. Well, on a more positive note, I was about 14, and my dad um, was not a talkative person. My mother was more social. My dad was just a very solid business person, uh, but very quiet. And it was very unusual for him to encourage or bring me to Tuesday sale day in our the sale barn where we bought cattle. And, and it was a 45-minute drive to this town. And, and unusual that morning, he said, go get some better je jeans on. Gary, you're going with me. He just told me what we, he, they told, my dad told me what we're going to do. He, we didn't ask to have a choice. And so I went and got the jeans and uh, better jeans and I get in the pickup truck and at that time I was uh, becoming aware of girls and so I was thinking about girls and I already was uh, sports minded so I'm in daydream la 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 land as I'm riding in the passenger seat with dad driving the pickup truck. Ten minutes out dad says go into the bank and get enough money to borrow borrow enough money for 300 head of cattle. We're forming the Shotton, that's my last name, Shotton Brothers Partnership. Really? Well, I didn't think a whole lot because I had 10 minutes. And then I'm thinking Dad's going in. 
But I'll never forget that day that I opened the door, shut the door, thinking Dad's coming with me, and he drives away. And I go into the banker, and I remember the banker's name, I remember the situation, and that banker asked me to basically job cost. He said, well, what, son, what's the cost of the cattle? Uh, I kind of know. Well, what's the cost of gain per pound? Mm, not sure about that one. And now what are you going to sell them for? Mm, I kind of have an idea. From that day forward, I've been a job coster. That experience, those few words, that, that go borrow enough money, was a game changer for me that I've always been conscious of the cost of things and kind of how we can make a profit. That's really important in business. So now I'm uh, in college and I'm home on Christmas break and I knew things were not going too good but you know when you're in college that's dad's problem I'm just kinda having fun but I'm studying and I do you know kinda like send more money kinda thing uh, but uh, I was uh, coming home and I saw the stress on my dad's face and and he had me in the pickup and we drove out to the land and and one of two times that I saw a tear uh, come down the side of his cheek just about to there right up halfway down the cheek that's as emotional as I ever saw dad uh, in, in my entire life that I can remember and um, the reality was he was not sure if he would have to file bankruptcy and he made just a few words he knew that I probably I think looking back he knew that I was designed to be an entrepreneur and own my own business and he just simply said you better go on to your job but in the same way he said you might not sell your soul to the corporation in essence that's what he said wow that stuck with me because later on I'm climbing the ladder I'm a little sports guy and so I'm, I'm competitive and I could see I could climb the ladder and I could be up there I don't know how high I wanted to go but I realized that that was not for me and those few words were very helpful to me to know that I should not take it too seriously and I'm so glad I did so my second business uh, was this sh business right here, the machine shop. And I had owned a previous business for 17 years. I'd set out uh, not owning anything for six years, just worked on rental properties and, and uh, had the ministry uh, edge that I'm still working in. And uh, I came to conclusion that God was leading me to own and operate a business. And I had first thought that this business would just kind of a couple employees, kind of respectable, but God led me to a company that already had 41 employees and it was a big commitment. And I was 45, I was 55 years of age at that time. And it involved borrowing a lot of money at a time when most 55 year old are not borrowing money for a big operation. And I kind of doubled thought myself and said, you know, I can't do this. And I, I met John. He's a very wealthy man. He is very skilled in business. And I approached him. I didn't really know him. And we're still friends. And he knows these words. And I approached him and described my situation. And he had the full ability to write a two and, a, two and three quarter million dollar check. It was in his account. And that's what the cost of this business was going to be at the time. And I asked him if maybe he would fund it and I could be a minor partner with him or a partner in some way so I at least owned a part of a big business. And he gave me a few choice words and very positive. He looked at me, he's a very quiet man, and he said, Gary, you can do this. Oh, he had more faith than me. I hadn't just met him. And I was backing out on this and those few words, I didn't do it because he said that, but I'm telling you, a few words redirected my life in a way that I went ahead and did it. I took the risk. I'm 14 years later. I'm nearly paid off debt free after working hard and saving everything and being conservative on my own pay. And I am so happy that I had those few words. So if you're a young entrepreneur, you ought to go out of your way to find a mentor. 
I'm trying to provide mentoring materials here so you can hear me and others that are entrepreneurs, but you ought to be able, try to develop a, a personal relationship with somebody. Little tip here, they're not going to be able to spend hours and hours and hours with you. 15 minutes here, a short phone call, a few, a bit of information here, do your homework, make sure you're not asking stupid questions, but make time to find somebody that will speak into your life.